This Focus on Health segment is brought to you by Aurora Healthcare. Hello and welcome to another edition of Focus on Health. I'm Ted Stefaniak. Today, we're going inside a hyperbaric oxygen chamber here at Aurora Medical Center in Oshkosh. Now, when you think of a unit like this, you a lot of times you're thinking about divers that have gone too deep in the water and maybe they get the bends, but did you know that a unit like this could also help you with wounds, burns, and even help you with radiation exposure? Joining us now to discuss hyperbaric oxygen therapy is Dr. Jack Tissonai. Thanks for joining us. Can you just kind of give us an overview of what is hyperbaric oxygen therapy? This is a monoplace chamber. There are also multi-place chambers and basically the patient is laying down and he gets put at pure oxygen to a depth of two to three atmospheres of pressure. Okay, now typically when, when I've heard of this, and I think when a lot of people think of a hyperbaric chamber or, or therapy like this, they think of divers and deep sea diving and getting the bends, but that's not always the case here. What type of person would, would need a, a unit like this? One of the indications is decompression sickness, but we don't see much of that. We don't have a deep uh, diving place in the area, though there may be some people that would fly in from diving at the Caribbean or something. What we usually see is wounds that do not heal. People with uh, vascular compromise like peripheral artery disease or diabetes and the wounds get uh, stalemate or stagnated and they don't heal well and they do better with high pressure oxygen therapy. Well, when I look at this, this is a big, imposing machine that, that patients see when, when they come in. When a patient is in a unit like this, what, what are they feeling? They're feeling increased pressure. Usually they'll feel it in their sinuses and sometimes in their ears. If you've ever been up in altitude in an airplane and felt your ears pop, it's a very similar sensation. Okay, so if you have something like that, do you have to prepare yourself or is there anything you have to do before you come in for treatment? We will check the ears and the lungs before the patient goes into the chamber and we will check to make sure that the ears are moving, the eardrums are moving. Occasionally uh, they're not and people have to go to have tubes put in their ears before they go in the chamber. Before the patient goes in for therapy, we have to take their clothes off and make sure that they don't have any ignitable source because they're going into a pure oxygen environment and it can be explosive. It can be dangerous. So make sure you don't have any of that with you. when you No get lighters in there. In there. <laughs> okay, well, when you're getting ready for this, how long is a typical treatment? How long are you going to be in a unit like uh, this? Treatment takes about two hours. There are varying therapies for different diseases, necrotizing fasciitis or the flesh eating disease usually gets a longer treatment and more of them in the first 24 hours and at a higher pressure. Usually that goes to 2.4 to 3 atmospheres of pressure. We usually do two atmospheres in this chamber. And when we use this, is it pretty much a, a, a one-shot deal or is it multiple times? It's multiple use? times. Usually treatment daily for about a month, but again it depends on the disease condition, sometimes it's three times a week that they have therapy. Okay, and I understand that uh, people suffering from carbon monoxide poisoning uh, can also benefit from hyperbaric uh, oxygen therapy. What are some of the signs that, that somebody's been exposed to uh, carbon monoxide poisoning? Headache, nausea, fatigue. And this unit could, can help help them recover from a situation yes, like that? Yes, that uh, cyanide poisoning also is an indication, I don't know whether we've seen any of that here. I did see, I have seen carbon monoxide poisoning in my previous 30 years of practice though. And, and besides carbon monoxide poisoning, I, I've also heard wounds can also be treated with, with, uh, car, uh, with hyperbaric oxygen therapy? Wounds that lack circulation such as peripheral artery disease, diabetes, uh, yes. <laughs> and this is here, it, it's kind of unusual uh, for this area to, to have a, a piece of equipment like this, so it's, it's here for everyone here in Oshkosh and the surrounding area. Yes, there is a, there are several multi-place chambers at St. Luke's 
and then there is a monoplace chamber, I believe, in Hartford, and then the nearest one besides that would be Appleton and Green Bay. Thank you very much, Dr. Tiss and I. Well, we were just discussing wound care. Right now, we want to introduce John Poss. He's a provider here at the uh, wound care department here at uh, Aurora Medical Center in Oshkosh. And John, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you and your staff do here at Aurora Medical Center? Thank you. Uh, as I said, I'm a nurse practitioner. If, uh, if you are referred to us or if you have a chronic wound, um, you would come in, the nurses would uh, bring you into our department uh, do a evaluation and then um, I would see you, uh, do, uh, take a history, uh, do a physical exam, uh, evaluate the type of wound you have, uh, order appropriate testing and then together would plan uh, some type of management uh, of this wound. Um, wounds, um, people at risk for wounds are, fall into different groups. Uh, oftentimes they have arterial side problems um, those are often caused by m some medical things such as diabetes, uh, kidney disease, history of hypertension, smoking is a big issue. Uh, these diseases <clears throat> cause injury to the uh, vessels, uh, to the arterial side, which is causes narrowing of the vessels. So if you develop uh, a, even a bit of a trauma, say, to your foot or your leg, if you have diabetes and you have a foot injury, uh, just simply bumping it against a chair at home. Uh, these uh, wounds uh, don't heal normally. They uh, can oftentimes become infected, uh, become slow to heal, and then that's where we step in and help manage this with antibiotics, debridement. <clears throat> we have different products we can use. Uh, I was at a conference in San Antonio this summer, and there are, they reported there are approximately 6,000 products. <laughs> so. Uh, we, um, we have many options at our disposal for helping uh, heal these. Uh, we have a staff of nurse, nurses here that are absolutely outstanding um, and oftentimes I'll discuss with them, I'll decide what the problem is, the mechanism, and um, I'll, I'll discuss with the nurses, uh, what do you think, you know, I'd like to do this and we have so many products and oftentimes they're uh, day in, day out, they, are, uh, they, they will see the patient m more frequently than I will because one of the services we offer is a, a daily dressing change or sometimes we'll see our patients two and three times a week. I won't see them every visit, but the nurses do and they, uh, they're very good at um, helping these patients manage these chronic uh, wounds and ulcers at home. And I would imagine one of the services that uh, you offer here in the wound care department is this machine right behind us, it the, is. the hyperbaric uh, it, therapy. It is. It's, it's really, um, oh, I wish I could remember the statistics, but even 10 years ago there, it, it, there weren't a lot of units and now we're really finding uh, how useful it is in uh, helping to heal wounds that might have otherwise in the, the past you might have ended up with an amputation of your leg. Uh, oftentimes now with our advanced wound healing, uh, we can um, Im improve those outcomes significantly. So the, the number of uh, HBO uh, therapies that, uh, and services that are provided are, are growing uh, each year. Yeah. Certainly a nice piece of equipment it to is, have for, for your patients. It is. It's very useful and the outcomes are impressive. Thank you very much, John, for joining us today. And if you would like to learn more about hyperbaric oxygen therapy right here at Aurora Medical Center in Oshkosh, or you want to learn more about the wound care program, all you have to do is give us a call at 920-456-7408. That does it for another edition of Focus on Health. I'm Ted Stefaniak. I'll see you next time. This Focus on Health segment has been brought to you by Aurora Healthcare.